Itsu. Come on, man. We don't have you as an intern for nothing. We don't pay you for nothing. Actually, yeah, we don't pay you at all. But the point being is you need to pick up the slack around here. I need a story, dude. Pronto. Oh, oh my god, Itsu, Itsu, you earned one kibble bite today. Oh, way to go, lad. I gotta see you later. Alright, so this is gonna be my first time recording off of a, off my desktop, so let's cross our fingers and hope that it actually works. Uh, I'm not gonna belabor the point anymore, uh, we're gonna get straight into it, this is not a live reaction, but I, I really wanted to kind of recount my thoughts over what I thought about the trailer, so without any further ado, let's just get straight into it. He wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. Alright, and just pausing really quickly, uh, this single scene alone tells us a lot. Uh, for one, it confirms a speculation that the community and I myself have had for a long time, a little over a year now, that the entryway to warp to the DLC would be through Mikola's egg in Moog's palace. So that necessitates that you have to be pretty far into the, into the game storyline to even access this point. Like to access the mountaintop of the giants, you have to beat Morgoth in the capital. That means you're at least halfway through the story in order to even access, uh, you know, the consecrated snowfield where you can find the uh, the portal to get to Moog's palace. So that tells us a lot off the rip. All right, and then we get introduced to a new, uh, like, skyline. And I got to say, we, we see, like, the little wheat shafts that we saw in the promotional image for Shadow of the Earth Tree that we saw, what, like, last year, two years ago, whatever. And then, ah, oh, just, all right, we're just going to stop here and admire this. How do they keep doing this? How does FromSoft keep coming up with visually fantastic shit, right? I don't see visuals like this in AAA titles. Sure, RDR2 had great realistic looking landscapes, that's great. I've never seen like imagination be put to a screen to the, like, the degree of skill that is showcased here. Like this is gorgeous, man. Another thing that I think, uh, one thing that we can really see here is like see those like weird little like cloth things extending from the tree this looks like it's its own little dimension like its own world or it could literally this realm could literally be the shadow of the earth tree like an embodiment of how things could be how things could have been maybe this is the paradise that Mikola envisioned for the lands between but with that let's just get straight to it all right so we see in sh our showcase a couple of npc characters that we're going to see beautiful locations and a variety of which mind you also i'm also going to pause to talk about what i think is going to be pretty intriguing to learn about in this dlc how did the factions that we saw in the base game get translated to this dlc are we going to be introduced to new factions uh, are they going to be based off of, like, their allegiance to Mikola's ideology? Is there going to be a different type of authority and governmental structure here? Because the base game was really rooted in understanding and uh, navigating, honestly, like, a political power and administrative standpoint. Like, like, do you choose Ronnie's ending at the end to bring about the Age of Stars? Do you choose to just perpetuate the, you know, the Elden Lord system? Like, what do you do here? So I'm intrigued to see what that what's showcased here, and I think this NPC in particular is really going to bring that to the forefront. Okay, just brief little pause here, guys. Uh, just take a note on this guy in the painting. He's going to come up in a little bit. Just just thought I'd let you guys uh, put that in your head. All right, and we're showcased a variety of environments, some of which I presume to be underground. Like we have a lava section, we have that cavern with all the pots here, which looks visually stunning, by the way. So it means that there's going to be a lot of vertical depth to this DLC. Not only, we're going to talk about the overall surface area later, but just the sheer depth looks incredibly promising. Never oh. <laughs> oh, okay. It doesn't look as visually detailed or quite as interesting as Stormvale or Dell, but this, what I'm assuming is going to be a legacy dungeon, looks visually amazing. And then, like, you see, like, these uh, floating structures over here. It reminds me of, like, uh, Ferramazula 
to a small degree. I don't know if that factors in. Maybe there's some verticality added to platforming. Who knows? That remains to be seen, but this looks gorgeous. And I swear to God, if there's like two, like the equivalent of two tree sentinels up here, I'm going to riot. Okay, and then we have this basket giant dude. One thing immediately pops out in my mind. Did FromSoft absolutely just love the Fire Giant this much to basically make a second one? I, I I don't know, man. Also, this has also brought to the forefront for me. I don't know how many of you guys have checked this out, but apparently uh, this DLC has a lot of references to the anime Berserk. Now, I myself have never watched or watched the anime or have read it, but yeah, I mean, from an outside observer, this looks very similar. And there's another character that we're going to get to eventually that shares a very similar trait of having a berserk reference but for those of y'all who have watched it and have read it uh please feel free to tell me more about it because i have no idea what what these references mean but i swear to god if i spend like 50 plus attempts on that guy i'm gonna i'm gonna commit seppuku oh okay this is what's really interesting me like it really interests me what this is I, like a lot of other people, immediately thought this was Sirash, you know, Horror Lou's, like, uh, familiar, like, the, the animal that gets paired with, say, like, an Elden Lord or an Empyrean, uh, as, like, their, their vessel, their envoy, you know? Um, and this has, like, a lot of lion features, so immediately I want to think Sirash. The only thing that makes it slightly different is obviously the human feet, the, uh, the presence of a human mouth. Good God, th this is, like, in hindsight, like, now that I'm looking at it, this is creepy as all hell. But oh my god, this looks this looks like it might be a fun fight. Like I'm just gonna let I'm just gonna let this speak for itself. All right, what's the over under that this is death blight? Okay, and now we get to the really interesting shit. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction anyone so? This guy looks like an absolute badass. But he does give me pause because of how much that they are promoting this guy. There is a possibility this is Margaret or Melania 2.0. I look forward to this guy kicking my ass. But he's also sparked a debate within the community uh, regarding about what his identity is. Now, officially within the trailer and the promotional materials, he is referred to as Mesmer the Impaler. But... Given his proportions and the physical characteristics of red hair, his face, and the fact that he referred to mother in that first scene, gives people a lot of evidence to think that he is related to Melania and Mikola as possibly a sibling. Now, a lot of theories have floated around that uh, that tie back to a particular phantom at a Church of America where a phantom references the unwanted child that was cast out. Potentially, and the fact that he mentions uh, mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction, like sanction someone to become a lord, you know, we became Elden Lord, um, America basically brought about all the events that would lead to the player character to become the Elden Lord, I don't know who else he'd be referring to other than America. Now, is he referring to it in a familial sense, or is he, like, referring to her as in, like, you know, she's the mother of the, the, the lands between, that kind of thing. That remains to be seen. I really hope he is related to the family dynamic, because that'd be cool. But knowing how FromSoft likes to pull the rug out under us over these things, I'm willing to bet he's not. Just, that'd be some of the funniest shit that they could ever pull. But regardless, he looks, this is going to be awesome. Ooh, also, another big thing is that they really wanted to highlight and showcase what the new combat was going to be like. We see a new spell here that looks really awesome. We see, like, they might be doubling down on some melee combat. There's finally throwables for big-ass pots. And then, come on, you get the machine you get the machine gun crossbow. Like, that's awesome. Also, really quick, really, really quick. This boss looks like... I, I hope this is a boss. This looks like a boss. This could just be PvP, but, but considering that this is obviously the player character right here, um, I have a feeling that this is most likely a boss. This moveset looks gorgeous. And, additionally, the set piece, the setting, the arena... Oh, this is throwing me back to, like, uh, uh, the Garman boss fight from Bloodborne. I have a lot of high, I have a lot of high expectations for this boss fight. 
and it's the one that I feel like got showcased kind of the least, but I don't know, there's something about this moveset, the way that it flows, the way that there's like follow-ups and combos, this might require a high degree of skill to get down, it'll probably take a couple attempts, I, I have a lot of high expectations for this fight. I don't, I don't believe that that's a new mount. I think that's another enemy. We have this, uh, the memed hippo, the porcupine hippo. It looks terrifying. It looks like something I would like see in one of my nightmares. Okay, and that kind of brings me to another point. I'm actually very astounded the degree to which they've stayed within the same art style of Elden Ring, but they've made the world feel entirely different, but still connected. Like, I have not seen a single creature thus far that, like, is emblematic of being in the lands between, but I could buy it being tied to some degree. I'm just, I'm, I'm in awe with their art design, dude. Oh, this guy. This guy right here. I'm actually pretty excited about this guy. People have memed on him saying that this is basically Radon 2.0 because of the mount, but I don't know. There's something about this character design that's really intriguing to me. And additionally... He also makes me think that he's tied to some degree to uh, the creatures from the stars, like from the abyss, like Estelle or the falling star beast because of this like little nodule on the end of his spine here. Also, <laughs> a little brief aside, I never played the, uh, the Bloodborne DLC, but I am aware of Orphan of Cause and come on, you can't convince me that this does not look like his melee weapon. <laughs> like, come on, it looks exactly like it. Oh, and then this is the guy that I referenced earlier in the painting. I believe that this is the guy from the painting, because take a look at this crest piece. Look at how it looks. Now, we're going to go back and take a little bit of a gander at it, because it's the exact same chest piece. Like, this, it is absolutely this guy. Now, what does he have to do with this? I have no idea. But this character is very ambiguous this is a character that a lot of people haven't talked about is this merica is there is this a character that we know already she looks familiar and considering her hand placement it might be about having a kid i don't know is this the father who who knows but on the brief aside i mean come on look at this this concept he's going to be ripping his spinal cord and ribs out to basically have a melee weapon it may include his head who knows but this cutscene is going to be lit as hell i just feel it and then we finally get showcased some of Mes uh, Mesmer's moveset, which looks to obviously include a lot of fire. And I mean, uh, looks like a new shield or weapon design, which looks pretty badass. A lot of ranged fire attacks, and then an Ash of War that looks to be sourced from the Crucible Knights. You know, the flying one? It looks sick. This looks, this looks amazing, man. Ah. God, it feels so good to finally be able to see like a like a concrete video. And then we get seen like a little bit of a teaser image of what we assume to be Mikola, or at least an angelic presence from the original like uh, teaser image. And then of course we get the hardline release date of June 21st, 2024. I could see them pushing it back maybe a week or two, but I doubt it considering the amount of confidence that came with dropping this trailer. I think they're ready to roll. I think that I think it's going to be June 21st, no matter what. Now, we still have a few more things to talk about. For example, uh, Miyazaki actually participated in an interview recently where he kind of talked to, touched on a couple of different subjects. He touched on Bloodborne and the possibility or the potential for a remake in the future. It's likely not going to come in this generation of consoles. Probably, it's probably reserved for the next gen. But what I find most interesting is, one, obviously talking about enemies, and the giant basket of flame, the guy that I'm most uh, not looking forward to to fighting, uh, has some pretty badass lore. Uh, he, he, the kindling burning inside him is actually the bodies of vanquished enemies, which looks amazing. That is, mwah, chef's kiss. He also reveals a really cool and interesting detail about the map design. The surface area of the new map is going to be slightly larger than Elden Ring's Limgrave area. Limgrave's pretty damn big, guys. I mean, it makes up for what? Like a fifth, a sixth of the surface area of the base game? I'm going to be excluding the Consecrated Snowfields and the Mountaintops of the Giants because I don't view those as, like, really concrete or really big and deep and interesting areas. I kind of just brisk through them. But, I mean, Limgrave's not only big, but it has a ton of caves, ton of different side content, 
multiple different biomes, a legacy dungeon, Everjails, swamps, like, it has it all, man. And considering the variety of environments that we saw in the trailer, we're in for a damn treat, guys. This is gonna... Aw, oh, I think it's gonna be awesome. Now, it's not mentioned in this article, but Miyazaki also revealed in this interview that there's gonna be a total of about 10 bosses. I'm gonna suspect that, like, 5 to 6 are gonna be storyline bosses for the DLC, and then 5 to 6... And, uh, four to five are going to be optional and side content, which for a DLC, that's pretty damn good. Also, additionally, some more details on uh, Shadow of the Erdry's expansion looks to be that the at least the original price tag, at least what we saw for the pre-order, is going to be about $40. Now, that's two-thirds of the original asking price of the base game, but considering how much content we're getting, that is a damn good steal. I am still of the opinion that Elden Ring's base game, in the way that it was released, is still infinitely always going to be on sale. That is a $120 game. I don't care what people say, it's ultimate value for the amount of content that you play, the amount of replayability that it offers players, and just the sheer size and depth of it. That is easily a $120 game. And it's essentially half price for us for the rest of time if not more with you know decreasing value $40 for this level of DLC and the amount of time care and quality that's going into this damn thing oh you bet your ass that's a steal in short I am unbelievably excited to play this and when I get my hands on this now depending on how things go for job lineups and stuff over the summer I should be able to record hopefully I can record we're gonna keep our fingers crossed on that guys but I'm going to still be working on the character like creation, like the character setup for this series when it inevitably like gets there. Uh, you're, you should actually be expecting a new upload on that series pretty soon. But the biggest challenge for me is going to be completing DS2 and DS3 before this uh, release date rolls around. So I need to get my ass into high gear, guys. But that'll do it for today, guys. I really appreciate you guys uh, checking in on this. I know this is a little bit more of an informal upload. But I'm just really excited about this, dude. Oh, hey, Chetley. What's up, buddy? Yeah, he's uh, on my desk right now. He's just been chilling out behind my monitor. He uh, decided to peek his head out for once. I'm giving, him, uh, I'm giving him some scratches for you guys. But yeah, until I see you guys next time, take it easy.